So I go to File, New, Project, Bottle underscore Project, Find the Path. So we're going to work with this bottle in the channels. I changed it to Arnold Standard Surface VFX by default. I could just leave it on this. What was it on? Principle will be RDF non-metallic. But the thing is, it doesn't have any preset for transmission. So I could just make my own channel. So let's see, can I do that? Import existing. Add custom. Let's call it transmission underscore weight. So I'm just adding this because it is for glass. So I might as well work in 16 bit. I'm using the non commercial edition of the software, so that is my limit. And I can always export at 8 bit if I need a slightly lighter, um, lighter texture. Okay, and this color here, that'll mean that there is a constant of zero applied to it. So that's fine. It's going to be at 4K. It's transmission weight, we've got that. I already picked 16 bits, so I don't know why that's blank. So. I'm just going to copy this file name and change the end bit to be transmission, transmission underscore weight. Cool. Create project. Mari's pretty damn slow. Okay, so here we are. It's in there, the bottle's in there. So I have the maps, I've, I've created uh, some baked maps, ambient occlusion and curvature. So that was done in my substance. So in order to add that to my geo channel, which is a new, newish, newer feature, I go to the objects tab at the side, and then I will go down in the object settings and we have these geo channels. So in geo channel one, I'm just going to find my bait maps which are on the desktop. Not great location, but YOLO, I guess. Go to the object tab, rename this geo channel that I imported to ambient. Inclusion. Great, then I'll add another one. So we have curvature. Uh, there we go, that's imported. So now on my base color going to remove this base and I'm going to click on this one which is add procedural and go to the geometry tab and we have the geo channel so now in here what I just imported should be here so if I want to take a look at my curvature ambient occlusion I can load it in there once Mari stops having a fit So that's my ambient occlusion. I'm going to change, this is the shady area, so I'm going to change it to flat, which you can see the hotkey is F1, just because it was looking pretty odd. Like, as we're painting a base color, we don't really need to see it shaded, because there's no other information in the other channels apart from, you know, a 
50% grey. So if we view at the moment with full shading on, it's going to look pretty odd anyway. You also have the shot option here for just viewing your current channels. And if you get confused with channels, just imagine they are separate groups. Like if you're texturing Photoshop, you might have separate folders or groups for different textures you're creating. So essentially, if you want to view um, just one, each one on their own, you would do current channel. But that's fine for the moment. So this is my ambient occlusion. Amazing. Curvature, let's take a quick look. You know, life changing stuff. So the main body of this, so my UDIM 011, I mean 1001, this one, that's glass. So the color for this will actually be coming through the transmission color. So we can forget about this. We can actually ignore this when it comes to texturing apart from the transmission weight which we have the separate layer for. So at the moment we could just focus on this area on the right hand side. So these bits, I know one bit will be cork and one bit will be metal. So let's put down some color. Let's go basic. So in this area, this procedural layer just going to pick color and I'm going to make it like a goldy looking color. If you want to color pick anything from online, you have to import the image into your image manager which is kind of annoying. So I only want this color to be on the rings that were on the model. So then I can right click on this and add the mask section, layer mask, add mask. Actually, I do uh, need to select that specific area first. So if we do patch mode, that will select the objects in a UDIM. Object mode, this is all one object on the import. So it will just select the entire object. So we probably need face mode. So I'll click the cursor up here and just check that it's in the selection mode. It's okay. I can actually shift and control hold shift and control, just drag out a whole bunch. And when you drag over things more than once, they'll like deselect. So I'm holding control and shift still, and it'll just deselect. So I've selected those rings. I will right click on that color layer and go to, actually seeing as I'm gonna separately you know, look at these, I might as well create a folder for these, like an adjustment stack, essentially. So, So let's create this group and then on this group, then that's when I will create my, my mask. So I'll go to layer mask, add layer mask from selection. And then I'm gonna middle mouse drag this color into that group. God, this is so damn slow.
There we go, that was painful. Okay, so now this will be separated. So in this group, I could just call it rings. So now we have the color. So we got, we've got that. And now I'll need to find some textures from online. So it'd be a good idea to probably get some textures beforehand. I can quickly create another two groups for these other areas. So although this area at the bottom will be powered through the transmission color, because this is all glass, the majority of this is glass, so I will use the transmission color in Maya to control that and the transmission weight um, that pretty much could be a black and white because you want to tell Maya you know what is see-through and what is not but then we might have to create another channel for I forgot what the setting is called but it's essentially transmission thickness or something like that so that's for any sort of rough looking effects in the glass um, but we can create a base color for the like dirt at the bottom of the bottle, that sort of thing. And then it will be a combination of including that in the transmission color. So if all this glass is see-through, then we would need to make sure the dirt is also visible. So we'd paint it in the, in the base color, but then include it in the transmission weight as well. So I'm just going to create these other two groups. the top group this will be the cork if there's a cork in the top of the bottle I'll make another one and that will be the bottle or glass maybe doesn't matter let's right click I need to do this selection first so I know that this glass is on a separate UDIM so I'll go to my cursor selection at the top and I can go to, where is it? Patch mode, just drag into that. So I can double check, but as you can see, it's just selected the bottle because I know that's on the first UDIM. So I'll right click on my group, go to layer mask and from selection. quickly do the same on the cork let's go to face mode and layer mask add from selection so I'm just doing this at the start just so it's neat and tidy and I'm not gonna get you know pissed off I could just keep things nice and separate oh I grouped this one twice oh, schoolboy error so I'm just gonna drag that out and remove this floating group I could delete that geo channel Cool, so I'm just gonna source some textures. Okay, so now back in Mari, I'm gonna import all these textures that I've just downloaded. Oh, my desktop, somewhere. Cool. 
as you can see, they're all from the same place. So let's take a look at the cork. So I've got, so what am I looking at? I'm just checking. So we've got the user's shader on. Could just look at the current channel and should be flat. No, it's on basic. So we'll do flat, flat colors. Yeah. Okay, great. Now to apply this texture, rather than paint it, I could just apply it in a procedural manner. So I'm going to do that. So with this group selected, I can click in this, uh, this procedural section and go into tile. I've been using the no graph, so I'm just trying to remember where it is. Pattern tiled and I wonder if I can drag that from there to there. Yeah, I can. Sweet. There we go. Five seconds. Cool. So now I've got that on there. And if we go into UV mode, we can see how that's looking. Very nice. And what I could do is I could hide certain areas of the model. So let's select this and selection, hide selected, hotkey is H. I'm going to hide that because what I want to do is dirt it up a bit. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put down the geo channel that I created earlier. If you do not have any baked maps, you can. Um, there is a way to bake ambient inclusion in Mari, and so you would load it in in this procedural tab. So where I am now, so we go to base. No, where was it? Geometry ambient occlusion and in order to bake that within Mari you would go to um, objects ambient occlusion there are no settings or anything as far as I'm aware so it's probably gonna be rubbish from what I gather I think I have used it once but then I had to drag the levels uh, add an adjustment layer or two just to get some information Anyway, so let's go procedural. So I've got the baked map, so I'll go procedural pattern. No, where is it? Oh, it's in geometry, isn't it? Geo channel. Channels. Let's take a look. Great. Okay. So this can be useful. So we could use this as some sort of mask. And we can also overlay it onto the texture as well. So if I just, with that selected, if I just went, uh, where is it, multiply. So this will dark, um, this will, will affect the color values. So already, it's giving us a nicer result, which is good because this bit will be refracted by the glass, which is on top of it. So we can keep that. So I'll just call that AO Darken. And so we can add the Geo Channel again. Geo Channel. And I'm gonna do curvature, take a look at that. Interesting. So if we wanted to, we could, again, if we use this as a mask, curvature is normally what people use to create um, scrappy metal objects. So I'm sure there's millions of 
guns that have been textured in Substance Painter and people just use the curvature. You know, they have the noise. Uh, so the curvature is revealing this white edge, which would be a lighter shade of metal. And then they just add noise along it. So you get that cheap and easy dirt fade away. Sorry, uh, edge, edge wear. So I'm going to call this curvature. Can't spell, never mind. So what I might do is duplicate this tiled. So uh, let's call this cork. Where is duplicate? see that there so I'm just going to create a new one so, so pattern tiled drag it into the group I'm going to put it on top so this is going to be the worn version of it. So I'm going to add, so I'm going to call it cork lighter. And I can add an adjustment layer stack. Um, so it gives me an option of what the adjustment is I want to make. So let's just do levels. And so if I click here, I have this new symbol. It's essentially grouping these new um, adjustments into this different area. So if I scroll down, I can color correct this. Similarly to Photoshop. Now, unless I press this pin here, this will just disappear. God damn, Mari, son of a bitch. Oh, God. Mai does that as well, just stick in to different areas. So annoying. So I need to drag the texture into this cork lighter. So I, you see in the top bit, the image manager, I dragged this cork into there and it has the adjustment layer, which is levels. So this needs to be lighter than it was before. Let's leave that for the moment. So now the underneath will be the darker cork, like that. And then we have the lighter one. In fact, this one underneath, I might just quickly add an adjustment layer to that, because that should be darker anyway, in my opinion. So I'm going to add levels to that. Just add a bit more of the mid value to give 
adds a bit more saturation to it. So then this lighter one is then just going to be used for the edges. So then I need to mask that. So I'm going to click right click, go to layer mask. And I might have to add a mask separately. So if I click here, so this should be add mask. So we can paint the mask. My mouse has just disappeared because Mari's dying. I don't know why this is killing my computer. Oh, that's an easy way of doing it. Okay, so create a mask stack. And then I'll pin this there so it won't bloody disappear. And get my curvature spell wrong. Paste it into there. Copy, <clears throat> paste, paste. Cool. Okay, I'm going to remove this layer underneath. You can already see what it's doing. So I need to invert this because at the moment it's revealing, um, it's doing the inverted. We want it lighter around the edge because when you get edge wear, it's generally lighter. So I need to add would it be, would it be invert, is that adjustment stack, invert somewhere, invert. Just going to remove this curvature that was underneath. And I think I can actually get rid of that invert. I don't think it was needed in the end. So I can, I can add adjustments to this mask now. So I know this is just grabbing the edge essentially. So let's, where's brightness look up? There we go. So now that I've been working in the node graph, I actually think this is 
a hell of a lot slower doing this. So the brightness look up. Oh, fuck off. God, this is so annoying, the sticky menus. Jesus Christ. Okay, you can essentially use this kind of like curves in Photoshop. So I'll change the view to current layer just so I can actually see what the mask is doing. So I want more of a clear black and then white. So I just want the edges. So let's go to current channel. So now that edge bit where the wear should be, that'll be the bit that's visible. So then we want to break, break that up further. So I'm going to close some of these tabs. So this is still the mask area that I've got floating here, the mask stack, which is the mask for the lighter version of the cork. So now I want to break this up a bit more, then I'm going to go into the procedural layer and I can create some noise. And I'm going to create clouds, where are clouds? Uh, mm, maybe turbulence. So that's just going to whack that on top and then I believe I need to add it, go to lighten and add. Actually the curvature is pretty, yeah. So the curvature will be our main and then we'll Maybe that should be a multiply. So this should just break up the edge further. So that edge, I know it would just be affecting that. So if I change to the current layer, just to see exactly what I'm working on, how it will be affected. So this is what's, what's going on. Whoops. Current layer and below, that's what I want, the combination. So you see how the these two layers are affecting each other. So there's not enough tiling of that turbulence. So the size needs to be a, a lot less. So you see there's more break up there in the curvature. should probably play with this a bit more. It's very harsh line. I want to spread this line out. God damn these fucking menus sticking everywhere. In this instance, I guess, just for speed, I'm just going to manually paint this. I'm not getting much much give from 
this curvature but I wanted to just break up that edge more and spread it out but I think in this instance it would just be easier to paint further but you can see the effect you can get when you're you know using the thing with using stuff like curvature and ambient occlusion is even if the model changes then you can still just easily bake those maps and then you've got these these extra um, your maps uh, your masks sorry or maps whatever you're actually using it for are still being powered by you know the mesh maps so it's pros and cons so I'm in the mask I've created a layer I'm just gonna call this painted by humans so I'm gonna hit the paint brush up here in the paint settings where's the shelf here's the shelf I'm gonna go to let's do hard surface so these are the inbuilt ones and I want to change how the brushes are so I think that's in the painting tab I'm just going to drag this to the side just so I can see what I'm doing more with it so this will be the settings for the paintbrush so I might have changed this in the past actually that's not what I'm looking for So, is it in the shelf? There is an area where you can change how everything, how the brush is painted, how it reacts, you know, if you're using a tablet, that sort of thing. So I thought it was in here. Oh, tool properties. Okay, great. So I do have a tablet on, but I won't actually be turning any of these pressure settings on. The rotation, I want a lot of randomness. So I'll put that 360. So that means every, every time it's clicked down, or if I'm doing a stroke, basically every time it prints down a new version of that brush it will rotate somewhere between 0 and 360 degrees that's pretty much the only one I wanted however I could I could turn on flow I won't do that so I'm using open bracket to reduce the size of my brush Just paint it blue on that. It's good. Let's change the foreground to background color, so we just need it to be white. Change the change it to be add. So we're essentially combining this on top of our previous layers. I could actually just make this bigger and just do a few random bits around the edge. This is going to be such a minute part of the model, but it's just for demonstrative purposes. Like if I was working on this, if this was going to be a nice close up asset, then it, it might be worth doing this sort of thing. So, this mask we're painting now is just for the edge wear. So I'm imagining, you know, if you think about the story behind the object, if this has been moved around a lot, you know, the cork might have been reused. Could have light damage. It could have hit a lot of surfaces, that sort of thing. Now I could paint this in the UV view, but I know that this top circular part of the model 
is separated from the rest of it. So when I finish going around here, then I can take a look. Okay, fine, that'll do. If you want to erase away bits like that, you would change the mode to clear. So this is like erasing. And by default, I've got auto, actually it works default anyway for everyone that uses Mari. It's got auto bake and clear. So if you imagine whenever you're painting in Mari, you have some glass in front of you, essentially. So you're painting onto this invisible glass. And whenever you try and move, it then bakes that onto your model. If you turn it off, it means whatever you're painting won't be baked onto your what you're viewing unless you press B. So, good and bad. Right, now that I've painted that mask, then I can go back to viewing the current channel. Let's see how that looks. Interesting, interesting. So, that mask is displaying the cork lighter layer. And just to double check that it is doing that, I can Oops, I'm going to close some of these. I don't think the computer likes the fact that I'm streaming this at the same time. So this cork lighter is on a normal overlay. Sorry, it's uh, yeah, it's not having a particular impact on the below layers. So let's go lighten and add. Mm, or maybe just overlay. Mm, no, the layer underneath is way too dark, so let's try color dodge. I just want to bump it, bump it up a bit, but blend it in a bit nicer. That's pretty weird. Mm. Let's try soft light. No, that does sweet F all. So we're going to change it back to lighten and add because this bottle is going to be seen from about that far away or further so that's fine I could also change the opacity of this layer up here so let's say I just want 25% less I could put that 0 0.75 or half of it it's not too bad, so from a distance we can see it looks like a bit of edge wear. So there we go. So I did manually paint it, but the process I began was just to show a way that you could procedurally do it. But Because if you paint everything manually, it is quite a destructive way of working. But you can see the effect that it is given by adding this edge wear. You can basically pump the curvature into things, or you could use the ambient occlusion, invert it to create edge wear effects because the ambient occlusion is there to create these fake shadows. So let's do some manual painting for fun. Um, let's add some grime. So now that I applied the ambient occlusion to this bottle, I know where the, the rim is. So 
I could paint on one of these decals. I've got some sort of grime. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call it grime. So we're just going to manually paint because it's fun. So control, when you've dragged in an image, it will automatically change it to paint through on the left hand side. Holding control, you can rotate things around. Pressing control and shift at the same time, you can scale it. Your brush is still open bracket and close bracket. And holding alt and middle, where is that? Yeah, middle mouse middle mouse move around and alt and right click and zoom it in and out so I'm just gonna start painting this on there actually I'm thinking about it if the water had come down there might just be some mossy bits at the bottom if there are any so it's just this bottom bit that I want. Oh, I didn't change my mode to normal. Damn. So I need to change my brush because it's just a very circular brush, so I'll change back to this rough one. And now I've already projected a bunch of it, so I'm just going to use. So, what you can do is when you're projecting a texture, when you change the mode to clear, it's still going to use this as, as a sort of opacity fit. Um, I think that's the right, it's going to use this as a mask basically. So whatever is in this decal picture, so this is a transparent image, it's going to use that as a mask as I'm painting back as well. Cool, that's interesting. I could actually do this in the UV layout. Take a look at the UV areas so you can see what I've been painting. So, and we can we know which bits are um, above and below the bottle. So I'm just going to paint. Didn't change the mode. Not paying attention. Tapping away. I feel like Bob Ross, the painter that paints random shit. Great, so that looks life changing. So I'm going to change the mode. Let's get out of this paint through mode. And I'm going to do darken on this layer, multiply. Whoa, that's caned it. Look at that. So let's change it. Let's do a bit of overlay contrast overlay. Let's see how that looks. Is this good? It's very dark. So what we could do is add an adjustment layer to that. So let's add color lookup. I mean brightness, brightness lookup.
actually I need to add it just to that particular layer. So for that grime that I just painted, I'm going to add adjustment layer stack. So whatever we add to this is just going to affect that particular grime layer. So I'll go to brightness lookup. I want some of that. And now I get this new icon in my grime layer. So it's got the brightness look up. I'm going to hit this pin just because I don't want this disappearing. Because as I'm doing this, Mari is lagging. So sometimes the panels disappear and it's just because there is like lag between what I'm doing. Okay. God, that's so dark. Okay, I might change the grime layer, the blending mode. So that was on overlay. So, um, let's go hard light. That's pretty intense. Well, all of these are pretty mildly disappointing. I guess I'll just leave it on normal. There's just a lot of um, playing around with this sort of thing. I could spend so long just texturing something. We're going to turn off the grime layer, turn it on and off just because I see there's white. And yeah, I must have painted that at some point. So I'm just going to remove that. So change my mode at the top to clear. And erase away. And then whenever I've painted, I always just go, I hold down Alt and Middle Mouse just to try and move because it's got the auto bake on. So I know if I'm just trying to fix something like that, then I should always try and move. It's kind of like in Maya, when you're moving around a lot, or when you're trying to do things quite quickly, I always uh, hit W, E, and R to change to like a different tool, because sometimes you could be doing edge loops and then it gets stuck in that function. So let's display everything, let's show all, see how that's looking. So we've got a bit of grime. Okay, that looks fine, cool. Then we have a bit of the edge wear. Amazing. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the rings. So I've put a color down. And what I'm gonna do is <laughs> when when Mari stops freezing, Jesus. I'm gonna pop down, I'm gonna use this texture, I've got a bare metal colour, so I'm gonna add in, select the rings layer, add a procedural. We want a tiled, so then we can drag and drop that picture in. It's a procedural pattern tiled. So this will be the metal and then we'll just repeat it. 
So I'll drag and drop that down there. I'll change the name of it to metal. This is just some bare metal that I got on textures.com. I'm just going to change the, re the repeats to five and five. Looks all right to me. And this color layer that I put there before, I'm gonna going to use that to influence the color of the metal. Oh damn it, no it should be, sorry, the overlay should be, where's the color? Because it's pretty much gray, the metal. So in contrast, component. There we go. Okay, so that now that's <clears throat> that's just completely swamping the color value values with yellow. So. Yeah, it's not so great, but we can deal with that. I can fade the opacity off a bit. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'll end up putting some texture on top. So let's put down a geo channel and see if we can work with one of those. Okay, so I could use this for some dirt. So, well, I'll probably have to alter it, so I could actually do that now, because I know that I need the black area to be spread further. So I can add an adjustment layer stack. And, just add the levels in. Let's just play around with this a little bit. Slightly grainy. But that would be, I think we can get away with that. So I'm just trying to rename this, but the lag AO. Okay, so now I'm going to put down, uh, shall I do procedural noise fractal, whoops, it's marble. I wonder what that looks like. Yeah, so I don't want that. So I'll just do a procedural and I don't know, turbulence, or there's that newer one called FBM or something. Fractal FBM. Cool. 
Okay, so I just need to tile this a bit more. So if I, I want to up the scale, uh, okay, so these, um, so yeah, this will be the base pattern, so the black and white colors. So I'm just going to change. You know, normally for these colors, I'd probably, I could actually color pick. So if I just pick some sort of, oh my gosh, that noise. So I'm double clicking on this. Uh, now these decals that I got are pretty gray. So I'm just gonna pick my own color. So. I will just pick some sort of brown, browny looking color. And then add a little bit more green into it. So we're just using this FBM, which is like a, some sort of fractal noise variant just rather than putting a flat color in, just because there's always going to be extra color variation. So when you're overlaying textures, you just want to include, that's why it's be better, if you want a more realistic um, textured piece, you should be using overlaying pictures on top of each other, blending them together Otherwise, if you want a cartoony look, then just hand paint textures. Because, I mean, that, we could probably get away with this, but if you add too much of that, then this is going to be overlaid onto what is actually a texture, so it shouldn't be as bad. And this will just be for darkening around the edges. So I might just change the scale of these. What I want is... Um, larger, larger chunks. Actually, no, I want smaller chunks, more variation, but okay, fine. Let's leave that like that. And this AO layer that I altered earlier, so I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to layer mask, add mask, and uh, no, it's uh, mask stack, where is it, add mask. Okay, with that layer selected, then I can do the adjustment mask stack there. So then we'll get this new icon. So this is just allowing us to layer up different multiple layers for a mask. So I'm going to pin this there so it doesn't disappear. So now I'm going to so this layer here that's created by default would actually be empty. So I'm going to copy this across again because it's not it's not doing what I want. God, this is so goddamn slow.
to this layer that was created here. I've turned off because it's it's just empty, so I can just remove this. And now I can actually invert this, so I can just add an adjustment to invert. So now you can see more of the look that I'm going for. So now we have the gold. So the color is overlaid onto a bare metal. And then we have this fractal noise. If I zoom in, you can see what's going on there. So that's fractal, two different shades of brown. And then we have the ambient occlusion layer in the mask of that which is now giving us this um, sort of dirt in the shadows type look so that's not too bad so for the moment I could just leave that um, so for the rings I could also look at adding the edge wear so I could quickly do that now so for edge wear, let me think, I would just need, so I'll create a layer of color. So it's gonna be a lighter color and then I could probably use the curvature. I'll have to check what that looks like. So procedural, geo channel. Let's just see what's going on with the curvature, see if it's useful. channels and in this instance I'm not I'm not so sure I'd have to probably faff around with that just invert it um, no, yeah I'm just gonna manually paint this because I just have to play around with it a bit more we just want that edge and we could you know it's gonna be faster to paint it so I'm just going to remove those layers, create a new color. So go back to the rings layer. And, whoops, let's go to procedural and so it was in basic. So in the color section. <clears throat> so I just want a lighter yellow. So I possibly should have color picked from I think that'll be fine. So that's gonna be the lighter yellow. So I could just name that light light yellow. So this is gonna be our edge wear. So now on that lighter yellow, I will add an adjustment uh, mask adjustment layer. So this means we have, we'll get a separate menu that we can paint our masks in.
So as I said before, it creates an empty layer inside this stack. So I can delete this. God damn it. So now we can see the texture because there was, although a mask has been applied, the mask is empty. So there's nothing there. So we're not seeing that light yellow. So I'll create a paint layer. I'm just going to pin this stack so I can actually see it. Now, because we're in the mask layer, we want to paint. I pressed the pin. Come on. Think because I'm recording this in 2K and streaming and showing a webcam, my computer is having a heart attack. I was going to pin this up there. No, I didn't, didn't mean up there. The snapping menus are such a load of wank. God fucking damn it. It's actually just annoying me now. Cool, so this is going to be the manual paint. So the edges would probably actually be nearer to the dirt that we've got there. So that being said, once I've painted this, this layer should probably go underneath the dirt this FBM layer which I didn't actually rename so I probably should do that so we're painting a mask so it's best to change this foreground and background to black and white so it's kept my brush but you could change the brush in the shelf but it's I'm happy with this one so I'm just going to manually paint on um, I guess it would be these lower edges where the edge wear is. Probably more so on this top bit. This is sharper. There is no flow in my brush, which I might want. It's very, very harsh. So I'm going to change the opacity. So that would be in tool properties. Opacity, let's put that halfway. Maybe even less. change the flow and it's coming out very harsh Now for this demonstration, I'm just going to roughly paint this whole area. Because it's so intense, it's probably easier to see that, you know, when I, I was talking about 
painting on glass earlier. It's probably easier with a, such a flat, because you can see there, it gets baked. So it looked fine from where I was, but it was actually going onto the edge. So I'm just going to change the mode to clear. Let's get rid of this shit. On that layer, I'm on clear. And it's not going because in the normal mode, I could probably change the color. Yeah, and do the same. Fine. I feel like the opacity has actually just kicked in with the tablet. Now it's actually doing the damn thing. It's more like it. Cool. So this would be the edge wear. So I'm just roughly, once I've paint this little bit, I'm going to play with the blending mode to see how that would actually look. Mm, I haven't painted exactly on the corner, but it's fine. So now on this light yellow layer, now I can play around with the blending mode to, you know, soften the look. So if I multiply that, I'll darken down. So I'm not sure if that would be appropriate. It's probably going to be something like color dodge. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. Looks like a rainbow. Let's try. Let's just check what overlay looks like. Overlay and multiplier are like the things that are used a lot of the time. It's interesting. We're getting that mix of colors, so we're getting some red values in there. I'm feeling it's going to be add, so it could be, could have it like that and then blend, I mean fade, fade it down. So then at a distance, could be something like that. I'm just going to double check what multiply actually looks like. No, yeah proper destroyed. So if it was on soft light, then I could probably add an adjustment layer stack and raise the brightness of it. Oh, I didn't 
didn't add that into a adjustment stack. So oh it's yeah, it's this one. The brightness look up. So now these symbols that we have here, it's just quite a convenient indicator. So you just have these these groups within groups, sort of inception type thing going on. So this brightness look up. I'm going to pin this because I don't like them disappearing, as you you probably gathered. And whenever I use the brightness lookup, then come on, move. Press this button here to get the curve editor. I'm going to pin that. to what I want. I'd need to continue that all the way around but it's just so when we're at distance I think this mask would need to be added further around the edge but it's just so when we're at distance similarly to this so we could just see a bit of some sort of edge where luckily this asset is meant to be quite far away so we'd probably just see it like that. So we can go to town a bit more but for the moment, yeah, I think that's all right, and we can continue with that later down the line. Mm -hmm.